First things first, Oliver, how are you? I'm doing well. I'm since four o'clock uh, on my feet doing interviews. I mean, I was flying before from Germany to Amsterdam, and uh, but it's great. A bit tired? But A little bit tired. Okay. Well, speaking of being tired, uh, you you obviously are in Camelot. You have your own band, uh, Sons of uh, Seasons. But you've been trained as a, uh, a music teacher. Do you ever get the chance to still teach? Actually, I'm not trained as a music teacher. I no. studied piano and uh, uh, guitar, but okay. not, you know, we have, you can go for teaching mm. or you can do professional musician. Okay. And I did that professional musician thing, which also enables me to teach. Uh, but um, like the, 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 the pure music teaching is, is basically a different branch uh, on the university. But you, I believe you do uh, give lessons, or you do. I give to? some lessons, yeah, to uh, some. Nowadays, I, I'm in that great position that I basically can can pick a little bit my students and take those which are really talented, mm -hmm. and and are really you know not forced by parents to. Uh, you're gonna learn piano like yeah. that, you know. Some it was sometimes in the past, and it was pretty stressful. Uh, yeah, and that is also fun. In in that way, then when you you get or pick students, do you play them the, the type of music you're playing or, or is it up to them? Are, are you kind of getting them ready to become a musician themselves? Or? Uh, I, w I wouldn't go that far. Uh, some of them are around between 15 and, and 20 and they, they have already the definite, uh, definite goal to become uh, professional musicians, mm -hmm. but some are seven or eight. Uh, and then at that point they want to be pilots or farmers or so and uh, but they definitely have the tal uh, talent for for music so I I'm not necessarily them bringing towards this difficult uh, business if they want to then but I do I do everything in my power of course and well for you as well because I, I, I assume it introduce, or you get to play a lot of different things from, from what you're normally playing. So does this influence what you do with Camelot and with your own band? Uh, always, yeah. I mean, I love jazz. I play a lot of classical music. I even uh, I love like experimental electronic music, you know. Um, so, and, and basically all of this can be channeled into metal. This is the great thing about metal. What I also love about our specific fan base that they accept those experiments. Mm. Uh, I think if, if we would reproduce the same record over and over, like, um, yeah, unfortunately some bands do, I would probably uh, become bored really fast or quit uh, at a certain point. Is there, with each album, that you try to do something new then? Or, yeah. or what, what was it for this album? Uh, first of all, at the very beginning of the production, I always stack up on my uh, like software and hardware, um, this like new libraries, synthesizers, stuff like that. Uh, this always gives me some ideas about new new sounds which I could include. And then uh, then I just write, and I always try to avoid going the same same path, you know, without losing that in, in Camelot's case the unique sound which is important for the band. Well, you mentioned all these different type of influences. I, I suppose this is different for each song, but what kind of thing would influence you? What kind of melody, uh, when you write a melody? What's like, what's my inspiration? Or yeah, the, 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 or not even that that's precise, but what kind of things? Is it sounds around you? Is it, as you mentioned, jazz or, or what kind of I things would... It can be anything. I mean, first of all, music feeds itself. So uh, what I'm being asked a lot is, again, this, this question about in inspiration, you know. Uh, but I don't need images, I don't need a walk in the park or something. It's like uh, I sit down very, it's, it's, I'm really routine. There. I sit early in the morning, I go to my studio, I work till, till noon, may have a break, and I work till the evening. Okay. And uh, it's, it's a constant creative flow I have, luckily. Uh, but I'm also deleting like sometimes 25, 30% or so, you know. And, uh, but besides that, it's it's, it's hard to tell, it's just there. And what exactly it was fed by, uh, I can't really tell. <laughs> do, do you know when you are on a good idea? That you have something you like? Usually what I have to do is, uh, I work a day, then I put it in aside, mm -hmm. I sleep over it, and on the next day, this is such a weird effect. Must have 
something in the brain that on the next day then I have the distance and everything sounds totally different. Okay. And it's, it's really like, oh, that's it, you know? Or it's like, nah, you know, I have to change it or maybe I have to start uh, from the beginning. Does this happen then uh, over longer periods as well? Where, for instance, uh, Haven was finished about a month ago. If you mm -hmm. listen to it now, is it different for you? With Haven, I'm, I'm not listening uh, to the CD at the moment at all um, because I need, I need my distance from it. And with a song or a song idea, I need a day. With a whole CD, I, I love to just let it rest for a month or so, or even two. And then also get feedback from fans and journalists, which is really important for me. And then listen to it with fresh ears, and it's like a whole new world. And, and in terms of playing it then, because you're, you're going on tour in America, I believe, uh, yeah. in the upcoming weeks. And when you play them, does, does it feel different or do they change for you as well? Uh, of course, it, it's different live. And uh, also the funny thing is that some uh, songs which are great on record don't work on stage. And some songs which were maybe never meant to, to be played live are then suddenly really cool and the audience reacts to it. There are some classics also from Camelot which we try to play over and over again and they don't work. And we still try to because it's everybody's favorite or so, but somehow live it's not, not the thing. And then other songs are just killing life. They're really good then. And uh, you mentioned uh, sitting down, uh, when, when you write a song, just sitting down in the morning. When it came around to Haven, and, and this is the first thing you wrote for it, what was your mindset at that point? What kind of, did you have an image in mind or, or a sound that, that the, the album should sound like? At the very beginning? Yeah, well, just the first things that, that ended up or, or that were for mm -hmm. Haven. I just started. You know, the, the very first thing I, I wrote is now the Japanese bonus. <laughs> okay. It, but that's, that's a weird thing, you know, that could be the, the first song. It was quite experimental, uh, was then rearranged later a lot. Um, you know, by Thomas, by Tommy, mm -hmm. by Sasha, or producer, and now it's the Japanese bonus. It could have been also the first track of the record, you never know. Then uh, the second song was Fallen Star, which is then actually the first, first song, mm -hmm. um, which uh, Thomas and me created in Germany through our session. But I just start, I, okay. I just dive into it. Do you notice then that the, the songs get a certain sound or because, um, well, there, there are some uh, general themes on the record. Mm -hmm. So wh when does that come into it or does it even come into it when you write? You mean that what is what the songs have in common? Well, the, 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 for instance, uh, on, on Haven, it's kind of uh, a lot of the lyrics are about a dystopian uh, kind of future. OK. So. Does that kind of influence you while you're writing? Um, sometimes, sometimes not. The point is the, the lyrics come usually last. Okay. Um, even many singers which I produce, um, I produce other bands as well, they, um, and often singers come to me they, which don't have a band, you know, mm. they, they want to have a whole record produced. Right. They have then tons of lyrics. And I'm also saying, hey, this is usually the last step. I understand how you're thinking, um, but um, usually uh, we have music, then you have melody, and then on, on, on top of the melody and the vocals, you put lyrics. Um, so there was no real image yet uh, regarding the concept of the album. That, that came then step by step, you know.